Hey everyone, this is Vin with Agony Gaming, and today I'm going to tell you about my Control Warrior build. This is a subject I've been kind of bashing my head against the wall on for quite a while. I've been trying to figure out how can I do damage, but also do control at the same time. And it was pretty tough. Uh, what I was running before was a Power, Toughness, Vitality build, and uh, frankly, you know, even though I was able to survive and I had a lot of health, it really wasn't doing any damage. And so in fractals and dungeons, when we were up against bosses, I just felt like our target was dying really slow. And the slower things die, and the longer you're fighting them, the more room there is for error from both yourself and your party members. So I think I've figured it out, and now what I'm doing is I'm using Night's Gear, which has power, precision, and toughness. Now on every piece of armor, as you'll see here, I still have it socketed with a ruby orb, which has berserker stats on it, power, crit, and precision. I also run berserker weapons, so my hammer, power, precision, and crit, and both my shield and mace have power, precision, crit. My ranged weapons are the same way as well, I'll cover them in a moment. Your primary weapon in this set is going to be your hammer, and I use a sigil of impact on that, which does more damage to stunned or knock down foes. Uh, your next weapon set, this one you can swap out. Uh, you can use a mace shield, and this will add a lot more crowd control. Uh, so in dungeons that you don't really need ranged, uh, I would recommend just going, going ahead and sticking with that. However, if you're in, say, fractals or up against certain bosses that require a little bit more ranged attacks, I would recommend either the rifle or the longbow, depending on the situation. Uh, the rifle is your better single target weapon. Uh, it is entirely single target if you look at the abilities on it. Or you can use a longbow if you need AoE, all depending on the fight. Uh, AoE attacks are probably the longbow's specialty, with a lot of flame and uh, burst damage in a small area. So this last set is completely swappable on whatever you need to do. Um, but again, for more crowd control, use the mace and the shield. Um, also put the mace with the sigil of impact so that you're doing more damage against stunned and knock down foes. And with your shield, this sigil, I'm not entirely happy with. Um, I will probably be changing it soon. So if any of you have any suggestions, feel free to comment below and let us know what you think would be best to go in the shield. For right now, I'm just using sigil of intelligence, which makes it to where when I swap to that weapon, I have a 100% crit chance on my next attack. Uh, for my accessories, I'm running berserker accessories for my rings and my amulet, and I've got these slotted with agony resistance. If for some reason you don't need agony resistance, then you can use one of the other infusions, but I feel like the stats that you get from those other infusions are very minimal and not really worth taking. Um, for your accessories here, I'm using emerald or calcum earrings of the knight, and so again, knight stats, power, precision, toughness, and I even use an exquisite emerald jewel for more precision, toughness, and power. Next, I'll go ahead and show you my traits here. I run a 10-0-30-0-30 build. The first 10 points in strength are very important. Uh, it gives you Berserker's power. This increases the damage that you do based on the amount of adrenaline that you have. So in your stage 3 adrenaline, you're going to do an additional 12% damage. Uh, this is great for not only your regular attacks, but also that F1 skill, uh, since that's going to give you a large burst attack. Um, I only use that skill with my hammer, and I'll explain more, more about that later. In defense, I run uh, 30 points there for Embrace the Pain to gain adrenaline when hit. Merciless Hammer, which makes it to where I do 25% more damage if a foe is disabled. It also reduces the cooldown of my hammer skills by 20%. And Defy Pain, which activates my Endure Pain at 25%. And then lastly, in Discipline, I use 30 points as well. That way I get Inspiring Shouts to gain adrenaline when using a shout. Uh, to gain a 9% crit chance at third stage of Adrenaline, and also to make my burst skills recharge 20% faster. Now, Quick Burst can probably be swapped out for something else, depending on what you need. 
So just kind of take a look here and see what you want. Uh, you can gain extra adrenaline on a kill. That's probably a useful one. It, it's really situational. Just depends on what you want to use and what you want to do. So let me go ahead and explain my rotation, explain the difference between the mace shield and the hammer, and then I'll show you how these work on a target. So for starters with the mace shield, I'll typically open up my attack with this if I don't have any adrenaline, simply as a way to uh, get some adrenaline. Um, other than that, you'll probably only switch back to it for these additional control moves. Uh, the first one is just a counter blow. It allows you to block an attack uh, if you are attacked during the time that this is channeling, it will counter the attack. Uh, otherwise, if you are not attacked, you'll gain adrenaline from it. Uh, pommel Bash and Shield Bash are both stuns. And then you have Shield Stance, which will block attacks for 3 seconds. This will kind of help you if you get in some hot water, uh, but it is only 3 seconds, so you can use that with Endure Pain. If you decide to use Endure Pain on your bar, I don't personally, so I'll explain more about that later as well. Um, the Hammer, you stack Weakness with your number 2 ability, you add Cripple with your number 3 ability. Uh, number 4 will push back nearby foes, so you got a knock back there. And you can knock down your foes with number 5, uh, Backbreaker. Now when your Adrenaline's full, I would recommend using Earthshaker. That'll give you a crit for about 4.5 to 5k. Uh, this will also stun any foes in the field that you cast it in. So let me go and cover my utility skills here. I use Healing Surge. That'll help me regain all my adrenaline. So in a fight where I know I'm not going to need to heal right away, I'll cast it while running in if I'm not already full on adrenaline. That way, when I start the fight, I'm already doing an additional 12% damage and have an additional 9% crit chance. For my shouts, I use For Great Justice and Shake It Off. For Great Justice is going to give me Fury and Might um, to both myself and my allies, and Shake It Off will help cure conditions. Now, one of these could be swappable if you feel like you need more crowd control. I would recommend Bull's Charge. Uh, this will allow you to charge and knock down your foes. Now number 9 is also a swappable skill. I prefer Dalyak Signet because it will reduce all incoming damage as long as it's passive. And if I'm in a situational fight where I know I'm going to need stability, I've already got it on my bar. However, this could be swapped out probably for Endure Pain would be your best option. And that'll make it to where you take no damage from any attacks for 5 seconds. And then the last skill is Signet of Rage. This one's swappable too, but you won't be swapping it quite as frequently. Um, it'll give you Fury, Might, and Swiftness, thus increasing the amount of damage you do. So during any fight, you're going to want to make sure that you keep both Signet of Rage and For Great Justice on cooldown. What this means is any time that they are available to cast, you need to cast them, and this will help maximize the damage that you can do in this build. However, in situations like the... Uh, fire imbued shaman in fractals, Ascalonian captain, or even Lupicus in a raw, where you don't have a lot of time to sit and res uh, party members, but you know the chances of party members going down are a little bit higher. I would recommend using battle standard for that instant res. So those are my skills there. Let me go ahead and cover one last thing before we go out and and kill a target so you can see how the rotation works. Um, I use Omnomberry Ghost for my consumable and what that'll do is it'll give you additional precision and it'll also give you a 66% chance to steal life on critical. Now bear in mind on February 26th they nerfed the way this food works and added an internal cooldown that isn't mentioned in the tooltip here. So even though you have a 66% chance, that doesn't mean that every time you crit, you're going to be gaining health back, even at that 60% ratio. Uh, because the internal cooldown, which isn't mentioned, is in place, it just makes it to where it can only happen every so often. And I don't think anyone really knows how often that is at this point. Alright, let's go out and kill a target and you can see how this works. I'm going to start with my mace shield because I don't have any adrenaline. Let's take 
down this Risen Preserver here. As you can see, the damage with the Mace Shield is, is mediocre, so you don't want to stay using it for long. Now that I've got a little bit more adrenaline, though, I can show you the hammer. The hammer does a lot more damage, as you can see here, so like I said earlier, you'll be using your hammer as your primary ability. So there you have it. That's my control build. Um, as you can see, it doesn't do as much damage as a damage spec uh, for obvious reasons. But this is a nice alternative if you want to do damage as well as control on a warrior. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me in-game. Again, this is Vin with Agony Gaming. Uh, for this video and more, you can subscribe to us on YouTube. Or you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter at AGNY Gaming. You can also check us out on our website at agonygaming.net.